All right, thank you for joining us back on the show. I was still trying to connect with our retired group captain, Sadia, Sadiq Shewu. Of course, we'll be talking about insecurity. But at the meantime, let's, uh, of course, today is the Holy Saturday, and it's the eve of Easter, the celebration of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. This is a significant season for Christians, and it also culminates the Lenten period. There's more in this next piece. The Lenten season started on the 14th of February with the Ash Wednesday. It is a 40-day season when Christians seek God in prayer, serve God and humanity through almsgiving and practice self-control through fasting and abstinence. It's only emphasized during the Lenten season that you intensify what you have been doing. It's not just that you are doing it for the first time, that you have been praying, you have been fasting, you have been giving arms, but this time, double it or triple it. Do it more. Lenten season is characterized by some age-long traditions, like the covering up of holy images in the Catholic Church from the Saturday of the fifth week in Lent until Good Friday, signifying Jesus' withdrawal before his eventual arrest. The seventh Sunday of Lent is Palm Sunday, when the Catholic Church observed Christ's triumphant entry into Jerusalem. <laughs> This is followed by the Holy Thursday, which marks the end of the Lenten season and the beginning of the sacred Triduum, the three days that precede Easter. On Holy Thursday, the Archbishop or Bishop in every diocese celebrates the Chrisian Mass, rededicating the priests to God, and later in the evening, the Mass of the Last Supper, where the priest washes the feet of twelve members of the church, reenacting the mandatum, Christ's command to his apostles to love one another as he loved them. For some years now, over 20 years, and uh, each year I've been doing this, and I see needs, okay, opportunities for me to renew myself, to also re-examine myself, to evaluate myself, and also to re-empower myself, and to tell God, into your hands I commit my priestly ministry. It's a day of renewal. So we we renew our commitment and we also have assurances of God's help. Okay. Gather together around the bishop. We we ask for God's help. And one of the things Bishop does is to ask God's people to pray for the priest. Beyond the clergy, the lay faithful also participate in the various programs within the Lenten season and the Easter Triduum, like the Good Friday veneration of a crucifix, a replica of Jesus and the cross by kissing, touching, or a deep bow. These practices aim to impact their interior life. The Lenten season, music-wise, we go a bit solemn. The songs and hymns are contemplative, reflective, and um, uh, they are meant to remind us of the passion of Christ, the suffering, just to make sure that man was redeemed after the fall of man. The Lenten experience is uh, when we are most, most conscious of our ordinary Christian life, a heightened um, experience in, uh, in our trying, our rising and falling, you know, trying to uh, dis rediscover our identity, our, where we fit in in the context of the uh, salvation history. There were lots of things that happened to me that made me to realize that I, I've been missing all these years. So this Lenten season for this year, drew me closer to God and made me to understand a lot of things about the church that I didn't know about before. Living through the Lenten observances and the Paschal season centered on Christ's resurrection, which gives meaning to Christian done, it is expected to have a lasting transforming effect on Christians. I have resolved within me that no going back, whatever it is I've learned and whatever has been impacted in me, it's not something that I'm going to drop. I'm going to continue with it. It's going to be a lifestyle for me. It's not a clothes that I wear and pull off. It's something that I'm going to carry in my heart all time. Me, because what I what I look at is like um, seeing myself within um, the context of the early church, because that is what this season these seasons are about, carrying us through the life of Christ. So I'm going to see myself again as someone sent, you know, to be the light of the world and salt of the earth. 
the, the somber mood of Good Friday is extended to the Holy Saturday until the Easter Vigil Mass when Christ's resurrection is celebrated. As we gradually draw the cutting in the Pascha season, how have the various programs and traditions impacted your life as a Christian going forward? Jane Francis Mweze, CVC News, Abuja. Let's bring you excerpts from the chat I had with the Archbishop of Abuja Diocese, Ignatius Kaigama, who is a Nigerian prelate of the Catholic Church. Welcome to the interview segment of Live from Abuja with the Catholic Archbishop of Abuja, His Grace Most Reverend Dr. Ignatius Kaigama. You're welcome, sir. Welcome, TVC. Thank you, sir. So it is Easter once again, and it's a time for Christians to feast. Tell us, Lord Bishop, what is, uh, what is Easter and what significance does it have on the Christian faith? Yes, the time of the year has come again, and we give God glory and praise. For the past weeks, Christians have been in the penitential mood of the Lenten season, the period of Lent. And it is culminating with this Holy Week. Beginning from Sunday, we celebrated the Palm Sunday, which is called Passion Sunday, and gradually moving towards Easter, which is the high peak, the point, high peak. And Easter is about Jesus. Jesus, having triumphantly entered Jerusalem, we were told they were clapping, singing, welcoming him with palms, even throwing their clothes so that he could go on them. He entered Jerusalem and then he was condemned to death. He suffered and he carried his cross to Calvary and there he was crucified. The good thing is that he didn't end his story. That was just actually the beginning. He died, he was buried, but three days later he rose. And that is showing victory over death, victory over sin, victory over the evil one. And that is what we celebrate at Easter, that Jesus is alive. And Jesus, with Jesus you can never fail. With Jesus you can never be a loser. Even things, when things are hard, difficult, challenging, cling on to Jesus. He is the way, the truth, and the life. So we celebrate him at Easter, believing he is alive, he is all over the world, he is present, and therefore we shouldn't be downcast. Now, Your Grace, Christ uh, is uh, a perfect example as Christians uh, celebrating Easter, bi uh, Easter biblical as um, believers. Um, is Christ a, a perfect example as Christian celebrates? Absolutely. He's the Son of God. He became man. God sent him deliberately to assume the condition of a human being. We call it the incarnation. He became incarnate. And therefore, he wanted to be like us so that he will see us from that perspective and whatever he did as a human being was an example to us so he's a model per excellence namely he taught us how to pray he taught us how to fight temptation see the devil in the desert tempting him to do this do that he taught us how to be firm how to resist the evil one he taught us how to love See how he went about doing good, how he, um, you know, supported the weak, lifted those who were marginalized and downcast, and he healed those who were sick, provided food who, for those who needed. So he was a perfect model, not just any model, but a model that was um, very, very perfect and wanted us to follow his way, to worship God his way and also to serve fellow human beings his way. And if we do that, there will be no problem with us, Christians or Muslims fighting 
this tribe or that tribe fighting, I tell you that will be gone forever. So let us focus on Christ and his message. Now this year Easter celebration comes amidst the economic um, hardship, which is due to the free fall of Nera and this inflation. What is your take on this and do you feel it will affect the celebration compared to how it is done in the past? It will certainly because um, people have very little, they go to the market, they buy the small major rice that they could afford, they cannot now, the beans, the corn and everything, even the corn, the rose by the roadside you go, they, they, the price has gone up so high that you cannot even afford that corn to eat. And so things are not well and we are people of hope, that's why I told you Easter is to tell us that we cannot give up. We cannot become so frustrated that we feel there's no hope. We are people of prayers, we are people of hope. We are praying and hoping that our leaders are watching and our leaders will see the sufferings of the people, that our leaders will ensure that governance is about providing resources for the people, looking after their welfare and being judicious in the expenditures they do so that these resources can go around. So we keep praying and hoping that things will turn out better. And uh, we call on our leaders while we are praying, please do the acting. Act well, govern well, be prudent in managing the resources that God has entrusted into your hands on behalf of all Nigerians. Do that well and there will be peace, there will be harmony, and joy will flow like a river. Your Grace, do you think um, Nigerian Christians are more religious than spiritual? when it comes to the real practice of Christianity. Yeah, we carry religion as a tag. You know, somebody wants to be seen as a Christian, so he or she appears as a Christian with all kinds of images on his body. Somebody wants to be seen as a Muslim, wears something that shows he's Muslim. But I say that is externalism. That is what the scribes and the Pharisees practice, and Jesus condemned that that does not bring about transformation and renewal of life. Religion is when you listen to God and you are able to serve him and you are able to draw inspiration from him and that leads you to uh, touch the lives of fellow human beings. So we have the vertical version of religion whereby you are relating with God at the vertical level but you must come down at the horizontal level to touch lives. That neighbor, that person you see, whether it's from the east or from the west or from the north, see that person as a person with dignity, a person made in the image and likeness of God. But we don't seem to care. We just concentrate on our narrow group. Right? And then we feel others are bad people or enemies, and we treat them with hostility. That is not religion. So let's practice true religion, sincere religion, positive religion in Nigeria, and we shall see the difference. Now, what is your message finally to Nigerians at this period? Be hopeful. Nigeria. Somebody has told me, why do you preach hope? I said, that is the only thing we shall hold on to. Hope that there is light at the end of the tunnel, that uh, things can still become better. While we pray and ask people to be hopeful, we tell, also tell our leaders to do something constructive. The resources are there. It's a matter of good governance, prudent management, distributive justice. Everybody should feel a sense of belonging in the country. But to get into power and alienate or marginalize certain groups because of their religious background, because of their tribal affiliations or geopolitical zone, is not good. It's not healthy. So let Easter remind us that we are one, one people and one nation, that we should live in joy. And even if we pass through sufferings and hardships, we believe that it will culminate in victory. Victory over hardship, victory over sin, victory over the evil one, and victory over everything that is bad. That is what Easter should point us to. Thank you very much, Your Grace. It's a very fine place to leave it. You're welcome.